So if I was starting a homestead and could only have one fruit tree, what would I pick? Well, first of all, I have tried numerous fruit trees uh, and I'm still growing several different varieties. I've got figs, I've got persimmons, I've got pears, apple, um, I've got grapevines, muscadine, I've got plums, I have grown peaches, I have grown nectarines, and I'm probably leaving out something. And all of them have their pluses and minuses. I'm going to tell you about some of the minuses first. Apples, in the south especially, are just hard to grow. There are varieties that um, are meant for us, low chill hours, and that's one of them right there. I do believe that is a Fuji, and it uh, produces well. They're very small. I don't thin them like I should because the tree has gotten so big, it's just hard to thin something 20 feet in the air. But uh, the Fuji has been the, about the only apple tree that I've had that is really a decent producer. I've had Einsheimer, I've had Anna. Plums, peaches, nectarines take a lot of work. And by that, I mean a lot of spraying. They're prone to so many diseases. And again, I'm talking about the South here. I don't know about how you Northerner folks can do this, but in the South, it is tough to grow peaches and nectarines. Plums are a little bit better, a little easier. Uh, persimmons are real easy to grow if you like persimmons. They have so many different kinds of persimmons that you can find something you like, I'm sure. And you know I like blackberries, and uh, that's not a fruit tree. I'm tr talking about trees now. So let me tell you, the, the one tree I would have, and it's not because I like pears more than anything, I don't. I'd rather have, much rather have apples much rather have peaches. I love peaches and nectarines. I just can't grow them well. I just can't. I showed you a video not long ago where I was pulling up the uh, nectarine trees I had and it's just because they were just diseased and, and just hard to, in the south, just hard to keep them from being diseased. But let me tell you about pears and especially this particular pear. This is the one I would choose if I could only have one fruit tree. Uh, not only would it be a pear, it would be this pear. This is an Orient pear. I was told it's not an, a true Asian pear, but the name of it is Orient, and it makes beautiful, beautiful pears. These are pretty good sized pears. That's as big as a softball. Normally they are, uh, normally they are a lot bigger than that. Maybe, maybe that that big. It's just this year has been so hot and so dry. And although I've been watering it, it's still having to deal with 100 plus degree temperatures and uh, just doesn't like it. But at the same time, look at it. You know, that's just one cluster right there. That's just one cluster. And they're everywhere. And they're beautiful. And they're tasty. They had not quite come into their own yet. I've still got about a week or so before they are real sweet, but I just watched a video on uh, Deep South Homestead that uh, about canning pears, and Danny said, don't wait till they get soft. So I'm probably gonna start harvesting these pretty soon and, uh, and canning a few pears. But I want you to just look at the tree. This tree is probably 30, 35 years old, I would say. And the reason I say the Orient pear is my favorite variety is because I've got two other pear trees here one is a Bartlett, the other is a Moonglow. I don't remember which one is which, but as you can see, they've got a lot of brown, dead limbs on them. As I understand it, that is pear blight. And uh, the older varieties of trees, such as uh, Bartlett and Moonglow, and some of the real old, just the standard varieties that have been around in America for uh, decades and decades, probably 100 years or more, those trees are just real susceptible to pear blight. The Orient variety, I don't see any blight in it at all. Sometimes I'll get a dead limb 
Uh, but it's usually, <laughs> it's usually because they get so darn heavy with fruit that they'll break. Well, let's look at that. Now that one is about eight feet tall, that cluster right there. And there's another cluster right next to it with probably eight pairs on it. 10 pairs if you count the ones hanging right above it, 10 or 12. I mean, this is just an incredible, and it's every year. It's not like I have a bad year. Now, if it bloomed out real heavy and we got a, a hard frost or below 30, uh, yes, I could probably lose some blooms. I don't think I've ever lost a full crop of pears to uh, a late frost in this Orient tree, but this tree has just been so prolific. And you can see it's ugly. I mean, the, it comes out and I didn't, it hasn't been pruned right. It hasn't been kept right. I do try to fertilize. I do try to water, especially if it's gonna be real hot. So if you're looking for a tree, a tree to start out, you just bought a piece of property or you wanna put maybe one even in a container. I don't know how well this would do in a container. That was the back side. Let me take you around on the front side. And you can see how that lamb is just just drooping. I mean, I have, I have come out here before in times past and I've, there would be hundreds, hundreds of pears on this tree. And I've taken two befores and I've propped them up, propped the limbs up because you can tell they're just about to break. And I've had to get a, go get a 12, 14 foot two before and prop under it just to, to, to save the limb. That's how prolific it is. Orient pear if you're looking for pears. It's a, it's a tasty pear. It's a, I don't know if it's the best tasting pear or anything like that, because I really don't have a whole lot to uh, compare it with, but it's a very tasty pear, but very good pear. My main reason for recommending this tree is it's just so little care. I don't do anything to it except water it, fertilize it once a year, maybe, maybe twice. I try to keep it mulched. I do try to keep it mulched, uh, but besides that, I don't spray it, it just doesn't need it. Now, uh, you can see all the pears on the ground. That's from, uh, well, that's from wind. Some of them are beginning to ripen and fall, but it's also from birds and squirrels. Squirrels, squirrels are the enemy on this, but this tree puts out so many that, man, I can feed every squirrel within 20 miles, I think, and still get some myself. So if you're looking for a tree, a tree, a good tree, uh, and you and you like pears, and maybe some people don't, but uh, if you like pears and you're looking for a pear tree, orient pear, and the fall is the best time if you're in the south, do not plant any tree right now. Do not plant any blackberry right now. It's just too hot. If you do find uh, a tree and want to buy it now, then I would bring it home, uh, leave it in the pot, and then... Uh, put it in a semi-shaded area. If you're in the south, if you're in the south and you have the kind of heat we're having right now, uh, I would put it in a, a, an area that gets a little sun, but not hard, harsh, uh, uh, late afternoon sun. That's gonna be your hottest sun. So, and then just leave it there and water it every day, every day, unless you can put a pan under it to kind of catch some of the water and hold it. And then uh, plant in the fall. If you're in the south, plant, you plant trees in the fall and winter. If you're in the north, my understanding is you plant trees in the early spring because y'all's uh, cold can uh, mess with the root system and we don't have that problem. Anyway, Orient, look way up there. I mean, that's just, that's just ridiculous. It has got so many pears. That's my best producer I've ever had in my life is that pear tree right there. Orient, get you one. Woo, we gotta put up some pears. <laughs> All right, we're gone.